Hello again. Um, this is the fourth video of a four-part series. Um, in this video, I'm going to do a, a comparative analysis between the, uh, the shoestring uh, CNC and the Gatton CNC. Um, I got the shoestring CNC, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago. Um, I followed Dave's videos. Um, every time he made one, it was another good day in my life. Um, I, uh, I put this together. I'd never had a CNC before. The thing worked just absolutely phenomenal. It exceeded my expectations by far. Um, so I became a real CNC fanatic. Um, when Dave uh, offered his plans for the new Gatton CNC, I jumped on that. I built the uh, Gatton CNC, and then ever since then, probably for the last six, seven months or so, I've been doing a, um, a comparison between the two. Um, really hard to tell which one I like the best. You know, I'm emotionally attached to my first CNC. As you can see, I haven't uh, disassembled it, um, but I really like what the new Gatton CNC does. Um, so this, uh, I hope you um, enjoy this video. I'm going to try to get through it as quickly as possible. Uh, in some cases, I'll uh, demonstrate and show right here in front of the two machines. In other cases, I've got some uh, close-up pictures that, um, that I'll add to the video so that you can see uh, more clearly what I'm, what I'm trying to convey. Um, both of these machines are made out of plywood, of course. Um, plywood is pretty much universally available. It's relatively inexpensive. It's a very stable material. And so um, I think it's a pretty good, um, pretty good material to make uh, your first CNC out of. Um, it does have its, um, plywood does have its downsides. Uh, the fact that it um, is plywood. It means that um, every once in a while you'll come across a void or an anomaly in the wood itself, um, which um, uh, will have an adverse impact on your build. But you know you work through that and you uh, you get done what you need to get done. And I think that uh, overall, um, plywood was a wise choice for these uh, for these CNC machines. The um, both of these machines came with uh, assembly videos. The uh, shoestring budget CNC had, I think it was 13 videos. I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now that those uh, uh, instruction videos that Dave Gatton put together for this machine, top notch, just phenomenal videos. Um, I think he did a good job on the videos that he did for the Gatton CNC. Um, although maybe it was just me, uh, just my opinion, I thought they appeared to be a little bit more hurried and a little bit less detailed than, than this one. But because this is such a configurable machine, it's easy to personalize it. Uh, maybe there was less that he could actually cover in specifics on, on the Gatton machine. I don't know, but um, that's just, just my opinion. Uh, both video series, though, about two and a half hours each one, um, and both of them give you everything that you need and more uh, to be able to assemble one of these machines. The, um, both of these machines have their own uh, support site. There's a Gatton uh, CNC um, a group on Facebook, and there's also a shoestring CNC um, group on Facebook. And so I think, uh, I think a lot of people probably uh, travel between both of those, um, those groups, and I think that they share a lot of information, and I think the cross-pollinization of information between the two machines is, is certainly a benefit to the user groups. Um, the cost of these machines pretty much uh, is a wash. Um, it's cost about as much to make a, um, a uh, shoestring CNC as it did to make the Gatton CNC. Uh, the Gatton CNC has a little bit more parts, but some of the parts that it uses are less expensive, and I'll get into that more in detail uh, later. The, um, the machines are very similar in a lot of cases. The uh, software interfaces that you use to control either machine is exactly the same, regardless of whether you use Linux or Windows. Um, the, uh, I prefer Mach 3. That's what I've used when I started out with this machine, and that's what I uh, ported over to the, uh, to the Gatton CNC. So, um, so I use the Mach 3, and both of them are set up exactly the same. So uh, it, it works the same. The, uh, I use Vectric software, again, choose your own, roll your own, um, but both, um, whatever software you get for one is going to work on the other one. The uh, electronics are the same. I started out when I built this one with the, um, uh, with the uh, Xylotex box. Um, when I got 
uh, when I built this one, uh, this machine right here, the Gatton CNC, I got another Xylotex box, uh, except in one case, and I've had five boxes now, um, except in one case, they all work perfect. So I've, I've got a lot of trust and confidence in Xylotex. Um, not, it doesn't give you all the flexibility that maybe if you built your own system out of a gecko or whatever that you'd have. But for me and for this, these machines, they work fine. Um, the, uh, the couplers are the same. They come from the same source as do the, um, um, the lead screw nuts. The, uh, the accuracy, I found that the accuracy on both of these machines is exactly the same. If you tune the machine up and if you get it running smooth and get it running right, the, um, uh, the accuracy is, is uh, again, exceeded my expectations by far. And, and they're similar on both machines. So I wouldn't say that one machine or the other has an advantage in accuracy. The, uh, both machines have um, uh, come with the aluminum, or uh, use the aluminum rails. Um, the Gatton uh, CNC used, I think it was three quarter inch uh, aluminum rails, and then the uh, uh, shoestring used, I think, one inch aluminum rails. I don't think it makes any difference. The aluminum rails, um, there, there is a break in period, uh, but once you get the aluminum broken in, again, I found that um, uh, getting past that break in period was the hardest part, but once you get past the break in period, uh, very stable and very, um, very repetitive and the accuracy that they, they give. I know some people go with uh, steel rails. Hey, great. Um, do, uh, you know, you, you do your own thing. Um, if I were to build another one, yeah, I'd use aluminum all over again. So uh, I'm sticking with the aluminum rails. Now, some of these differences, and I've got a whole, you know, page of differences between these machines. Um, the biggest difference, I think, is the adaptability and the personalization that you get with the GAT and CNC. Um, the, uh, the parts that come with it um, don't include the gantry, um, nor do they include, of course, the, um, uh, the uh, box that it sits on. And that's where you can configure this machine to, you know, to suit your needs for, uh, for your own size. If you're good at uh, long lead screws, then you can make the machine you know, as long as you can get lead screws for. Um, this one right here I made, I, I thought I'd take a chance because I've heard some bad things about using lead screws longer than four feet. Um, this one right here is five feet in length. Um, I've not had a problem with it. I've got no whip. I've got no uh, problem with the accuracy um, of these lead screws. So um, maybe I got lucky and maybe it's just uh, an old wives tale, but regardless, I've got mine at five feet in length, uh, works fine. And um, again, if I were to do it over again, I'd do the same thing. I don't know if I'd go any longer than five feet, um, but at five feet was fine for me. Uh, there's also some other places where um, I found that the adaptability and personalization really suited my needs on the Gatton CNC that I wouldn't have had um, on the shoestring. The um, assembly and use videos, I think I've pretty much covered that um, initially. The, um, oh, so, so the parts. The, um, the parts list on the shoestring budget CNC because I think the design of the shoestring was very constrained and the, the builder, you know, you basically got one design and one plan and that's what you built. Um, unless you were real good at um, adapting plans, which I'm not. So the, uh, the parts list that came with this was very specific and the sourcing was very specific. I knew exactly what to order, from whom to order it. And so it, uh, to me, it was very simple. On the Gatton CNC, uh, it wasn't quite as simple. The parts list um, left a lot for the builder to, um, to interpret. And so um, uh, it was a little bit confusing for me because I'm kind of a black and white numbers guy, cut and dry. So, so I had to kind of work my way through that. Um, but mostly about the, the different sizes of screws and decking screws versus you know, regular wood screws or whatever. Um, but again, it's not something that someone with um, the least amount of intelligence can work through. So, um, but I did find that the specifics of this particular um, list was, was very beneficial to me. The, oh, the fasteners, the mechanical fasteners on this uh, machine right here, they use the, um, this machine used the, um, uh, the dowel nuts and the quarter 20 screws. Um, I thought those were just phenomenal fasteners. I'd never used them before. Um, and I, the more I used them, the more respect I got for those types of fasteners. 
Now I will say that it gave me absolute fits trying to line up some of those holes uh, to make them to make them work right. Um, and so some of my holes are perfect size and fit perfect, and some of my holes, you know, in this machine are a little bit bigger, uh, so I could get some wobble and, and make those uh, screws go into those dowel nuts. So a real pain to work with, but very reliable fasteners. Um, and I was a little bit concerned on the uh, Gatton CNC, especially drilling, drilling and screwing into um, the sides of, um, of plywood, because everything I read on the internet said, don't do it, or if you do do it, make sure you drill the right pilot hole and that sort of thing. But Dave Gatton provides with his plans um, a um, very comprehensive and very complete uh, list of what type of pilot holes to drill with what type of screws. So that helped immensely, and uh, I have not had a problem at all with, um, with the screws being used as fasteners in this machine. Um, I think the proof is in the use, and if you look at who's using the, uh, these machines and how much use they're getting, and the fact that there are no problems, I think that, that, says, that says it all right there. Um, so I'm, uh, uh, I'm not a believer, in drilling and screwing into the edge of plywood, but I'm certainly um, certainly happy with my gas and CNC. Let me put it that way. Um, the um, the the V groove bearings the, um, is different between the two machines. The in this machine right here, um, you have double V groove bearings um, on your Z box. On the Gatton CNC machine, you've got um, three. Uh, Three, three bearings. So instead of having four on your Z-Box, you've got six, which is an increase of 50%, which is also an increase in cost. Uh, the same thing on the, on the uprights. Um, there are six um, V-Groove bearings on each upright versus four, uh, two on the top, two on the bottom. So there is an increase of 50% on your V-Groove bearings and your cost there. And also um, you have the back plate on the Gatton CNC, which will take another, what is it, four, four bearings. So a little bit more expensive to pay for the V-groove bearings on the Gatton CNC, but because you're using screws for fasteners versus the dowel nuts and the quarter 20 um, screws, you'll, you'll have a savings. You'll realize the savings there as well. So the trade-off in the price is, is, pretty, much, is pretty much a wash. Um, the, uh, some other differences, the uh, width of the Z-Box itself, um, the width of the Z-Box on the um, shoestring CNC is, I think, four inches, and the width of the Z-Box on the Gatton CNC is five inches. Um, it's probably a reason for that, and the reason is that on the router mounts on the shoestring CNC, um, the screws here were one inch apart. Uh, the screw uh, width on the Gatton CNC are two and a half inches apart. And um, I think that adds a little bit more stability as well. And I think that, it, uh, well I know that it also gives you the flexibility then to get third party um, uh, router mounts, which is what I did on my Gatton. Um, and that, that uh, bolt spacing then fits different, uh, or is more standard for different types of router mounts. Um, so that, um, that helps. Uh, let's see, what else here? I got um, uh, the dust collection system on this. Uh, this the, the shoestring CNC came with a, um, I think it's two and a quarter hose uh, adapter up here that was built in, which, you know, to me, it just kind of forced me to use two and a quarter inch uh, dust collection, which is the standard hose for like a shop vac or whatever. Um, that's fine. That was great. It worked well. Um, getting a longer hose to fit was a pain, but, um, but it worked. But on the, um, the Gatton CNC, you kind of are left to whatever kind of dust collection you want. I prefer the four inch um, hosed uh, dust collection because I've got the jet dust collector and it works great. So, so it's nice to, um, to have that option on, on the Gatton. I could have had the same option on this, but then you know, I wouldn't have used a part that was configured in the design. So. Um, wire management. So, um, wire management on the shoestring CNC was 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 really helped by the fact that there was nothing up here to clutter the top of the uh, the Y axis, and so on that uh, on that top of that gantry, um, you could actually have a uh, uh, 
uh, like a drag chain. I've never had much luck with drag chain. In fact, I had one up there for a while. I took it off. But um, the um, you, you had the option to use that drag chain up there on top of that. On this, uh, on the Gatton CNC, because there's a cross member that goes across the um, the gantry. Um, I don't think you can um, put a, a drag chain up there. I think you have to configure your wire management um, off of the top of that particular gantry. So, um, so that's a difference there. Um, the uh, oh, so this is really I thought a great benefit, as as well as the additional um, uh, V groove bearings. Um, Dave added a back plate to the design on the, on the uh, Gatton CNC. And I think that gives it a lot of stability because now instead of just having a top and a bottom rail for your, um, uh, for your router to ride on, um, you've got two top and two bottom rails. Um, so you got four rails versus two and I think that adds a lot of stability. And again, in my case, you know, it gave me an opportunity to do some other um, personalizations as well. So I saw that as a real plus for the Gatton CNC. The, um, the access to, um, oh, the y-axis, um, the y-axis on the shoestring CNC is, um, is a, I think it's seven and a half inches tall, yeah, seven and a half. So the, uh, the difference, the distance between the rails on the y-axis was, um, seven and a half inches and then on the shoestring and then on the Gatton it's uh, it's an inch shorter I believe I think it's six and a half inches um, I don't think that makes any difference whatsoever I'm just saying that there, that's a difference as well um, the um, the access to the couplers on the um, on the gantry uh, is much much more difficult almost impossible unless you use spacers on the um, uh, on the Gatton CNC you can't see I've got you have to go to the back of this to see, but um, I use spacers on this so I can get to those couplers because every once in a while I find that I have to tighten mine up because mine will get a little bit loose. Um, on this one, on the um, uh, shoestring budget CNC, as you can see up here, I mean just easy as heck to get to to tighten those up. Same thing on the, uh, the Z axis, you could actually get right in there and tighten those up, no problem. Um, on the Gatton CNC, it's a little bit more difficult on the Z and impossible unless you use spacers on the, um, on the gantry. Um, also, uh, when I'm talking about the Z axis, um, on the shoestring budget CNC, it was real easy just to grab this, um, when the motors were turned off, to grab this lead screw and just twist it and you could change the elevation of your Z, no problem. Um, you can't get to that lead screw on the uh, Gatton CNC, so you have to use a knob up on top of the, um, the motor on your Z-axis in order to turn that, um, that Z-axis and get it to um, either elevate or, or uh, come down when you're doing your zeroing and other times. Um, um, whew, recessed lead screw nut. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so on the Gatton CNC, um, the uh, lead screw nut is recessed into the, um, the uprights. And I think that's a brilliant idea. Um, I, I always thought that with the torque of the um, lead screws that there may be some, that there's a potential for some wobble for that lead screw nut block here on the, um, on the uh, slaved axis. So um, they've had pocketed this um, lead screw nut block into the upright here on both sides. Um, I like the idea so much that I use that idea when I attach my uh, nut block to my um, to my z-axis. Um, it uh, I had to recut the uh, block a couple times to get it long enough, but regardless, I did pocket that in the inside here, and uh, just to give me this, the the um, overall confidence in that particular connection. Now, I will say that I never had a problem with wobble on the um, side on the um, shoestring CNC um, because these uh, mechanical fasteners, the dowel nuts, just work so well, um, and they held it very very steady and stable. I never never noticed. Um, any type of wobble at all, but I think being recessed is just you know one more thing that you would do in your design, um, which Dave did in his design, to um, 
to prevent that from happening. So I, I appreciated that, and I thought that was a very good idea. Um, um, okay, so that pretty much um, wraps up what I had on my list here. I hope I've covered everything or every thing. Oh, I, I know one more thing I didn't cover. So on the um, on the slaved axis on the um, shoestring CNC, you only had one width of plywood between the top and the bottom uh, aluminum rails. On the Gatton CNC, Dave, in his design, has thrown in an extra piece of um, an extra thickness of wood between those two rails. And I think because those rails now are wider apart, again, that gives you a little bit more stability um, as the gantry rides um, back and forth along those rails. So, so I really like that upgrade as well. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up what, um, what I had listed here for um, some of the differences and similarities between the two um, CNC's. I think that um, both of the CNC's um, are exceptional machines. Um, I will say that forever. Um, their accuracy continues to surprise me and please me. Um, their durability, I think, is, uh, is very good. So um, I have um, crashed this machine a couple times. And when I did, I would manage to, um, to break a couple parts. So I think that it may be um, prudent when you get your machine and put it together, uh, to make a couple extra parts, it's not hard to do. Uh, just so that's what I did on this one. I made some extra parts that I um, had experience breaking on the other on the other machine, and I've just got those put away. So in case I ever do um, inadvertently for some reason, you know, crash the machine, crash the um, the z-axis, then um, I've got you know extra router mounts and uh, uh, parts configured so that I can just take parts out and put parts back in. And this one right here. Um, I was really happy when I, when I did crash it that all I did was just split some wood so I was able to clamp it back up together and um, uh, at least it was um, usable long enough to, to cut one more part. I took this apart and, and um, uh, replaced the, uh, the plywood and it, it ran fine. And I think if it was a metal machine and broke like that, maybe I would not have been able to fix it enough to, to run that extra part. But um, because it was plywood, I was able to use some clamps and, and it worked just fine. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah, so I've made some extra parts just to keep for a rainy day. The, um, the expense of both machines, as I said before, are pretty much the same. It's a wash. Um, the uh, similarities of both machines, I think, make the choice very difficult between the two unless you know, you're really going for the um, personalization and the size that you uh, may need uh, for your uh, particular workflow, then, um, yeah, then the Gatton gives you a lot more, lot more flexibility there than the, uh, than the shoestring does. Um, and then uh, last but not least, the, uh, the safety and maintenance for both machines is um, pretty much a wash. Um, what you would have to do on this machine, you would definitely have to do on that machine. I haven't noticed any more maintenance on this machine than on the um, uh, than on the shoestring. Um, so that pretty much um, that pretty much does it for this particular video. I hope you've enjoyed it, um, and I'm looking forward to doing the next one. Thanks. We'll see you later.